We're here with Thaisa Frank, the author of Heidegger's Glasses, a book that's been called A Tour de Force with Haunting Imagery by Jim Moritz of the Huffington Post. She also co-authored Finding Your Writer's Voice, which has been compared to Brenda Ulan's If You Want to Write, and her short stories have received two pen awards, and her most recent collections, Sleeping in Velvet and A Brief History of Camouflage, have been on the bestseller list of the San Francisco Chronicle. Paisa, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm so excited I get to talk to you. It's very cool. Um, why did you want to write the book, Heidegger's Glasses? Um, were you drawn to the material in some way, or what, what first sparked that idea? Yeah. Well, what sparked me to write Heidegger's Glasses, first of all, was someone telling me at a party that Heidegger had had a revelation about his eyeglasses. So I thought, wow, Heidegger's Glasses, that's a great title. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty title driven. Uh -huh. I, I often just know something is, is going to be a story or a book by its title, and then the title is like an, a pinata made of iron, and I just beat it and beat it, beat it until something comes out. <laughs> so, are are yeah. you allowed to tell us what the revelation was, or will that be a spoiler for the book? Like, what was Heidegger's, what they said he had this revelation about yeah. his glasses, what was that? It was just that he looked at them and didn't remember what they were. Oh, interesting. And he, he would have these moments a lot uh -huh. that he called tilted moments. Huh. And in these moments, he would fall out of the world. And of course, everybody has experiences where they, where they experience the world sort of devoid of human meaning, mm -hmm. sort of the bare bones world. And you realize what a fragile universe you're living in. Mm -hmm. That's all. That, okay. that was a revelation. Interesting. Uh, and he wrote about it in Being in Time. And I had read Being in Time and was kind of blown away by Heidegger, but I didn't remember that. And mm -hmm. I just thought, a great title. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. Um, well, the interesting thing about Heidegger's glasses, to me, is that um, about 16 years before I wrote the book, mm -hmm. I heard, it wasn't channeling, I mean, I, I knew I was a writer, and I get these ideas, but it was a woman's voice talking to me from the bottom of a mine in northern Germany. And they were writing letters to the dead, and I could tell she was trapped. Hmm. And I wrote out those 16 pages mm -hmm. and put them away. Hmm. And uh, because I thought, you know, this is a novel, and mm -hmm. I'm not a novelist. I write short <laughs> stories. I said, not what I do. Uh -huh. But then when I, this title, Heidegger's Glasses, led me to write about an underground mine in northern Germany where people answer letters to the dead. Hmm. Okay, so what, what's interesting about the imagination, I think, is that it, it, it imagines things, but it also reaches things that we know. Mm -hmm. So it turned out that there was a very little known program in Germany called Operation Mail, which is kind of ghoulish. When people were brought off cattle cars, mm -hmm often just before they were led to the gas chambers, so they weren't even processed, they didn't even have a number. They were asked to write a letter, forced to write a letter to a relative saying, conditions are fine, sign up, and everything's fine, wish you were here postcard. Oh, wow. These postcards were not mailed to the relatives because they didn't want the relatives to know what camp the person was in. Mm. It was to encourage people to sign up and also to dispel any rumors about the final solution. They were mailed to these, you know, I didn't know this until right. midway through the book. Wow. They, were, they were mailed to the Association of Jews in, in, in Berlin, and then mailed to relatives. But the mailing system was chaotic after Stalingrad especially. Uh, often relatives had been deported and were writing letters themselves, mm -hmm. or people misaddressed things deliberately so relatives wouldn't be targeted. Right. So the result was bulging mailbags. Wow. So I thought my what if and mm -hmm. why it isn't historical fiction is that's a real fact. Mm -hmm. But I thought what if the Germans, because they wanted to dispel the final solution, and we're so afraid of the astral plane and the dead chattering. Mm -hmm. What if they actually got people who otherwise would have been deported to answer these letters mm -hmm. and store them? Mm -hmm. So that's what these people are doing in the mind. Um, you're known for a surreal style of writing. Um, have you always written this way? And, and, and how would you even define that? Yeah. 
I think I have always written surreal stuff. Mm -hmm. Although now and then I write things about my life, mm -hmm. which seem surreal, but they're not in the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just think that people naturally fall into different kinds of writing. Mm -hmm. Surrealism is kind of an interesting style of writing, because, and I think and that people can relate to it, because in surrealism, you take one weird thing and you put it into an ordinary world, mm -hmm. like in Metamorphosis, Kafka, mm -hmm. the guy turns into a bug. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing. And then it's all sort of logically from there what happens. The mm -hmm. real world then deals with it. He has to get out of bed with all his little legs. He assembles with his very bourgeois family to decide whether he should catch the train to work in this horrible state, I mean right. a bug. They decide, no, 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 you can't do that. <laughs> right. He goes to his room to support themselves. They hire boarders. The bug creeps out to listen to his sister playing for the boarders. His father sees him, throws an apple on his side, and he dies. Right. So surrealism, I think we all experience. When we say something is surreal, we mean something is going on mm -hmm. that feels like it couldn't possibly be happening, mm -hmm. but we're still in the world. Mm -hmm. And I think that all surrealism does that. Mm -hmm. And that is kind of also that idea that you were talking about earlier about how he was just looking at his glasses. Yeah. And, and is that kind of what that surreal element was for you that sparked that for the story? Or Well, I think what's surreal to me mm -hmm. is that Heidegger could do that mm -hmm. and still be part of a Nazi party. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That's totally surreal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> totally. <laughs>